Hello, today we're going to talk about the National Native Seed Strategy. My name is Maggie Gaddis. I'm the Executive Director of the Colorado Native Plant Society. This presentation is based on uh, this document, the National Seed Strategy for Rehabilitation and Restoration. And uh, you can find all sorts of other reports on the BLM webpage noted here. All of these are great information. So I try, I try not to uh, put too much of my own dialogue in here, stick to those documents as my guiding force. And then I, my plan is to tell you how the Colorado Native Plant Society is associated with this effort. So firstly, the strategy and includes a vision and mission. And the vision is the right seed in the right place at the right time. And our mission with this program is to ensure that there is appropriate seed available for our restoration efforts. I'm not going to read all of these bullet points, but what I want you to notice is the emphasis on the word native, native plant communities. Uh, so no, the American land management system is not that old and uh, native plants have never really been at the fore of that. Uh, if you think all the way back to the Homestead Acts of the early 20th century, in order to claim land through the Homestead Act, you had to improve it. And so a lot of people in our Western landscapes um, were looking to do some ranching. And there were no native seeds in um, the trade sector of the time. And therefore, they did what they knew. Um, these were colonial endeavors, so things like cheatgrass, smooth rome, um, those are plants we brought with us from the old world to help us settle the American West. But now we're in a totally different time and we understand the value of restoring our ecosystems and specifically to use native plants to accomplish that, to maintain the ecosystem integrity and the ecosystem services that we all rely on. So another thing we see in this notice is that um, we understand that there are ecological challenges, right? We are working to manage in light of ecological challenges. And this was not the like prevailing uh, perspective in early American land management. Um, and so that's a critical shift in my opinion. And also this idea that we understand that locally adapted seed sources are going to be the most successful for restoration because we live in a very diverse uh, and large country, right? So a particular seed might be available across the entire Great Plains, but the environment is so different in the Eastern Great Plains from the Western Great Plains. So we want to make sure that we're collecting re seed re resources that are locally adapted and appropriate for their ultimate applications. <clears throat> and the final thing that is has a huge impact on me is this idea that we're finally seeing language about the intrinsic value of native plants. Um, we might not be able to know exactly the value of every native plant and ecosystem, but we're starting to understand the value in preserving it for future generations. Now, another key part of these guiding values and principles is the um, reliance on scientific expertise. So in the world, in our modern world of biology, genetics rules the day. We have a lot more tools in our toolbox than we might realize um, to make vital, important decisions about ecological restorations. And <clears throat> although we might still use non-native species in some situations, they really should be limited. Another key piece to this is collaboration, right? That there's a lot of different agencies in America that are managing the landscapes, right? So there's Department of Interior and Department of Agriculture. And um, the 
BLM is Department of Interior, National Park Service, National Monuments, and then we find that um, the United States Forest Service is under the Department of Agriculture. So we would really like to see these groups working to Together to achieve a holistic mission for ecological management. And then also there's a lot of language um, really directed towards non-federal partners. So one thing that I didn't emphasize at the beginning of the talk, which I really should have, is that um, the increase in funding driven towards the National Native Seed Strategy is related to the bipartisan infrastructure law. And the language in that law really emphasizes how um, our federal land managers and other partners and other sectors of our society um, can work with people outside of the government to achieve the goals and mission. Uh, and so we are, we are there, that's us. We are the non-federal partner, Colorado Native Plant Society, alongside Colorado Natural Heritage Program in this particular endeavor. Uh, and then finally, we're looking at the value of using a native seed bank um, and then also the value of partnering with diverse stakeholders. So we think about who might use the land in a historic context. You know, we think about resource management, but we live in a much more diverse world than that. And so we're really expanding beyond that. So I tried to point out here some of the language and actions that like really started this um it was the gateway so the critical shortage of materials available after the wildfires of 1999 and 2000 um were were what made congress pay attention um so we had these devastating wildflowers fires but we 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 couldn't do anything about it. Um, we realized we didn't have those native plant materials available. In 2014, the presidential memorandum, the departments of agriculture and interior shall establish a reserve of native seed mixes, including pollinator friendly plants for use on post fire rehab projects and other restoration activities. So the secretarial order number 3336, to the extent practicable, will utilize locally adapted seeds and native plant materials appropriate to the locations, conditions, and management objectives for vegetation management and restoration activities. Here are other legislative actions that reference this background environment. Again, we see lots of language emphasizing those native plants. Now, the strategy, it, we're currently in a five-year cycle that goes from 2022 to 2026, um, and the Colorado Native Plant Society has a five-year funded contract with the Forest Service to uh, assist in the Rocky Mountain Native Plant Materials Program. And Region 2 includes five states, Colorado, Wyoming, South Dakota, Nebraska, and Kansas. Um, and in our region too, we have a lot of grasslands um, because of that geography. And we also have all the way up to alpine ecosystems. So it's an extremely diverse landscape <laughs> within our region. Um, we're interested in collecting forb shrubs and grasses. We're currently collecting primarily grasses um, with some forbs and we're hoping to get into the realm of collecting shrub material as well. We don't ever um, collect federally or state listed species, rare or endemic plants, or commercial timber species. And all the seeds that we collect through this program uh, will help land managers select appropriate plant materials for their ecological restoration efforts. So there are four primary goals, and I want to talk to you about how we interact with these goals. So the first is to identify seed needs and ensure the reliable availability of genetically appropriate seed. So we work really closely with the Colorado Natural Heritage Program um, to develop the seed list. What seeds do we want to study? And CNHP is really the science leader in our world of native plants here in Colorado. 
Um, so they are at task and we are assisting there. And then as we go forward um, in from identifying these seed means, we'll be collecting them. Um, so our primary job as a society is to assist in the collection of these native seeds. And that includes monitoring the phenology um, to know when it is appropriate to collect the seeds and also to look for populations from which collection might be appropriate. And we do only collect from Forest Service lands and we will only be using these seeds on Forest Service lands. Goal two is a research oriented goal. And although we haven't gotten involved in research yet, we did collect seeds last year and they are currently being increased. And so we will have um, seed material with which to conduct studies. So like what you're looking at with these Petri dishes, like this is a germination study. And also there can be like um, field garden plots where out in the wild we like plant the seeds to see measure various um, growth parameters see how they're doing out in the field. Goal three, again, CNHP is really taking the lead here and we're assisting in the development of tools that help managers to make timely and informed decisions for ecological restoration. And goal four, develop strategies for internal and external communication. And I think we're really, we're really, uh, shining here, right? We have a really robust community already. And so we're working to bring our opponent's community into this sphere um, and also helping with managers to talk to each other because we're all over the state. So we're able to interact with uh, forest service managers all over the landscape. Just to wrap it up, what does success look like? When I look at this, I think that success looks like everything that we do as a society. You know, we're a um, 2,000 plus member organization filled with botanists, who many of whom are very excited about collecting seed, but more importantly, we know the native plants and that is the thought leadership we can really bring to this environment. People in our membership, our researchers in this field, and we hope to exercise our professional membership to help to continue to deepen our understanding of the work that we're doing here. We're helping to strategize, like how could farmers get involved in the seed increase process? Because after we collect the wild seed, um, we, we farm it, you know, we send it to a seed increase facility, like a nursery, or to the plant materials center for the region. And they grow out the wild collected seed and then they collect seed from the grown out uh, specimens. And that's how we increase the seed from some ounces or a few pounds, which we collected to many, many pounds for restoration. Um, we also work with nurseries in um, not so much seed storage facilities, but to supply seed, right? We're, we're, as a society, working both on this natural resource management scale, but also in the commercial scale, right? We do all, all this stuff in the horticultural environment as well. And those things are helping us to really um, facilitate this process because we understand that, like, uh, that whole transition from resident to uh, co corporate space to public space in our public lands. And finally, we are ready to put the right seed in the right place at the right time. And so we thank you so much for listening to our, this talk. And if you're interested, please check out the CONIPS calendar and join us for a restoration committee meeting where we discuss um, the processes of this project. Thank you.